What is that? A little update on these issues with the Taco actuators used with the Ecobee thermostats. So tomorrow I'm supposed to meet a rep <laughs> from the vendor to go over some of the issues. And I've already heard through the pipeline that they already know that there's an issue with these two devices used together. <laughs> and they've had that issue and people complain. So they're talking about relays and whatnot, which I assume he means with a separate transformer for this. So uh, I'm going to meet that guy tomorrow at that place. So just for review, I have a 24 volt transformer right here in one of these spare Taco valves. And there's the sine wave coming out of the 24 volt transformer, which looks all nice and normal. But when I cut connect the Taco valve, watch what the oscilloscope does. Got nasty spikes all over that, just wicked, just totally wicked. Let's do that one more time. Look at that. Yeah, so that's nasty. So I did, I did some thinking, and I'm going to show some pictures on the screen because I took a picture of the guts. But they solidified the electronics, so I can't get to the bare circuit board. But I see some high microfarad capacitors. They're low voltage, it looks like. The real tall capacitors there, and they charge up to drive the motor once this, they're fully charged. And then that's when you get that delay, and then the motor will open the actuator. And then when you take the power away, it is that stored energy in those big high microfarad capacitors that powers this device to power close the valve. It isn't spring close, it's power close. So that's their little idea they have. <laughs> and if you look, there's a little tiny capacitor in there, the surface mount probably, and it is um, pretty small. So I have the feeling that that is the 24 volts rectified to DC, which is going to be at least 24 volts, probably a little higher, maybe even rectified. And I don't think that capacitor is enough. Basically, uh, filter out all the spikes and everything you get as the power supply charges those big, tall, low voltage capacitors. And so it seems to be a lower voltage that drives that motor. I think that motor was like 5 volts or something, if I remember checking it. So I think is going on is the 24 volts goes into that circuit board. Rectify charges up that real short capacitor. Higher voltage, but real small capacitor. I don't think it's enough. Powers the board. And then there's a buck style or something, you know, switching power supply that charges those really tall, low voltage capacitors that is for the motor. So... And then when you take the power away, it is the stored energy in those big, tall capacitors that power close the valve using the motor instead of a spring, evidently. So what I'm thinking is on the external to this sucker, I think I could just put another rectifier in series, convert this to DC before it even goes here. And sure enough, it still, it still worked. So what I've done just for a test is I soldered a, uh, put a diode just to rectify half wave rectification to the capacitor. And then that capacitor, so it's now going to be about 24 to 25 whatever volts DC going into this thing instead of AC. And the reason I've done this is I'm thinking, you know, I could go ahead and filter the power externally by charging this capacitor. This capacitor is 50 volts. And it's 47 microfarads. And I experimented with a couple different ones. And once you hit 47 microfarads, it doesn't seem to make any difference if I go higher. So I'm just going to plug this in. And I have this rigged up because I'm going to take this tomorrow to the job. But now, going to a diode and then filtering the DC here and then going in there. Basically, there's another capacitor to basically absorb the transients you get as... Uh, the circuit board drives the uh, DC to DC power supply inside to charge those big, tall capacitors. I think it's high current spike, so I'm just basically providing another capacitor this way. So when I hook this up, look, I get just a little ripple. You can see all the noise, but it's not like before. Maybe that'll be enough. And then, you, of course, see when the LED is blinking, that's when it's charging those big giant capacitors and then when it goes steady is when it's fully charged so that's a lot less noise on the 24 volt sine wave than there was before it takes up to 30 seconds it says if it's been off for a while it's because the you know driving the motor backwards drains those capacitors but those capacitors are huge and i think they say six micro not microfarads six farads which if they are it's pretty insane 
and I guess they got a deal on those because those are usually expensive. And there you go, here, click, and that's when it's supposed to be driving over the motor. But I broke this thing when I took it apart, so you're not seeing it turn. And now you just get like a little ripple every once in a while. But it used to get a real big click every couple seconds as it was trickle charging those capacitors once that this thing drives open. So that's pretty cool. So I have the feeling that that will remedy the issue with the Ecobees. However, what are they going to say? I mean, they're probably not going to do anything like this in the field. But maybe if maybe there's something pre-made you could buy that's already just two wires in and two wires out for a rectifier and a capacitor. Who knows that they'll be willing to buy. be way simpler than putting other transformers and a relay in there to, to run its own 24 volts to this. But that is what they're talking about doing. <laughs> but me being a geek, this is what I would do.